Okay. So welcome. Um, my name is Natalie Olson. I'm the Education and Outreach Director here at the Battle River Watershed Alliance. And I'm the coordinator for the Central Alberta Caring for Our Watersheds contest. Um, so I've been in this job and uh, hosting Caring for Our Watersheds here for the last 10 years. And this is my 11th Caring for Our Watersheds competition. Um, but it's the first one like this, of course, with the pandemic, everything's a little bit different. But, you know, I'm really excited for what we're able to do this year and to have you guys all participating. So thank you so much for um, taking this time to be with me today in this webinar. I just wanted to have some time to get together to tell you a little bit more about what to expect and to open it up to any questions. Um, so just before we go any further, I just wanted to make sure that everyone can hear me okay, everyone can see me okay, can I just get some thumbs up or some nods? Okay, good, good. I didn't bother putting on the headset, so um, hopefully the sound's okay. And uh, it's too bad because I had actually made a really fancy Prezi presentation, and then I came into the office because the Wi-Fi here is better. Oh, Amanda, if you don't mind just turning yourself on mute there. Sorry, thanks. No, that's okay, thanks. Um, yeah, I made this great Prezi presentation, and then I have usually been working from home, so my computer there has a new Windows, and it worked fine, and then I came into the office, and this computer does not have the right Windows, and so I cannot show you my Prezi as it is meant to be seen, but it will still work just as good. Um, and so that's actually just like one of the lessons of today too, is like dealing with new technology and all of that kind of stuff. So um, that's one of the things I want to talk to you guys and, and prepare you for today um, for our virtual final competition. So I'm just going to share my screen. And if you want to leave your camera on, you're welcome to. If you would rather turn it off at this point, you can, because we're going to share screen and the pictures are going to get really small. Okay, so I'm hoping now you can see my presentation. Jasmine, can you, or Jasmine, you can you nod? Thank you, all right. Um, yeah, so I'll just walk you through this, this webinar will probably only take, or this presentation will take maybe 15 minutes or so. Um, if you have any questions that come up, feel free to put them in the chat box or make a note of them and we can talk about it at the end. Okay. So first of all, um, congratulations on being selected to be part of this final competition. Um, you know, it's a very big thing that you have been selected. And so I hope you feel really good about yourself already. We're very proud of you certainly already. And I hope everyone around you is proud of you as well. So um, I just wanted to show you and kind of introduce you to the other finalists. So every year we have 10 groups that come and present at the final competition. And so this is the list of the finalists for this year. Um, and I've put them in order just by the school in alphabetical order. So there is no ranking or scores related to this order. Um, so you can see that we have schools um, from all over the place, from Lloyd Minster, from Fort McMurray, from Lacombe, from Edmonton, from Murnham, and Edmonton. And uh, we also have a variety of um, sizes of groups. So some of the groups are just one person, and some of the groups are four people. Okay, and in between that, and that's great, right? That was always an option um, for the contest that people can submit individually or in a group of up to four. So don't worry if you're on either spectrum of that. There's, I think, advantages and then sometimes disadvantages of both. Um, you know, of course, if you're by yourself, you don't have to worry about some of the teamwork stuff. Whereas uh, if you're in a group, Sometimes it's, uh, you know, there's disadvantages of that too. So 
Um, however you come to this competition is great and we can make it work. And then for proposal ideas, we also have a variety of ideas, um, some around composting and gardening. We have one about the importance of picking up dog feces. We have things about electricity and switching to LED lights. Um, some projects that are a little bit more education focused and trying to spread the word on things. Um, the cure to the plastic pandemic is around reusable masks. So there's really a wide variety of topics, which is really great too. And uh, you'll be able to see all of these different presentations at the live event on September 24th that we'll talk more about later. Okay, so these are all of our finalists and um, it's wonderful to have you all. So just so you know, this year um, there's over, there's about 75 students who participated and those were from 34 different proposals from 10 different schools. So this is a bit lower than most years. Some years we have more like 100 proposals or so. And I think that's just with, you know, things being so crazy this year, it was definitely hard to have um, people participate. And if you're in and out of school, it'd be pretty hard. So numbers were a little bit lower this year, but that's all good. We're really happy with the proposals that we got. And everyone's gonna be receiving a thank you prize. So we've mailed those to the schools now. Um, I meant to have one with me. Oh yeah. So everyone's gonna be receiving one of these um, Bluetooth headsets. They uh, uh, are wireless earbuds and everyone that sent in a proposal is gonna receive one of those. So hopefully um, that gets to you soon and you'll enjoy having that. So um, I need to know if you're attending. As people were coming in, I was just making sure. If you haven't RSVP'd yet, please let me know that you are attending on that RSVP form. Um, it lets me know that someone, that your group is gonna be there. And it also has an address form on there because I want to send you a little package for the final competition. So it, it's an additional gift. You'll get one of these headsets, but we're gonna send you something else to your home as a finalist. And also it's gonna have a little snack pack and some fun things for the live event. Okay, so make sure you submitted that to me. Okay. So um, on to preparing your presentation. Now, your presentation, Let's see here. There should be some content there. It was one of those fancy transitional slides. So apparently it's too fancy for my computer right now. Not able to make it happen. But I'll see if I can open it up. Now, um, when you're starting to think about preparing your presentation, don't feel like you have to start from scratch. Uh, definitely use your proposal. So you're basically taking your thousand word proposal and turning it into a five minute verbal presentation. And you wanna include all of the best information and maybe add a little bit more information if you're able to, especially if there's any feedback from the judges about things that you could elaborate on. Be sure to include any of that. Okay, so um, I think I'm still screen sharing there. The, can someone let me know if you don't see the presentation? Pretty sure it's still going, but if it's not, let me know. Um, so when you start your presentation, You know what, I think I'm a little ahead of myself here. You have to go back to preparing your presentation. There we go. So, hmm. Okay. 
Yeah, sorry about that. So your presentation, when you're gonna be presenting to the judges, I'm gonna ask that you introduce yourself and say your names um, and say your, the name of your school. And we'll have some time there to get all the tech stuff sorted out. But for the presentation itself, it should be about five minutes long. So make sure that you're practicing that uh, quite a few times, make sure that you have it so that you're comfortable, so that you're not having to read every word, just like you would do in school. You want to be able to, if you have cue cards, that's fine, but you want to be able to look up and look at your audience. Now it's a little bit different when you're virtual, but like I'm doing right now, I'm kind of looking into the webcam. So I'm not looking down at my notes, right? I'm not looking at myself on the screen but I'm trying to make eye contact, which is a little bit more difficult in this platform, um, but it's still possible to do. So you wanna be practiced with your content enough so that you can, um, go, so that you can talk pretty comfortably to the audience. Oh my God. Hi EcoVision, welcome. So we're just talking about the presentation. So in your proposal, we asked everyone to start with a little bit of information about what is a watershed and telling us a little bit more about your watershed. Now for the verbal presentation, because it's so short, don't worry about doing that, okay? Um, just kind of get into the real meat of your idea. So instead of um, focusing on what is a watershed, at this point, everyone knows what a watershed is, it's fine. Just focus on your concern and how your project will improve it. So if the watershed concern is about the um, uh, amount of water in the river, let's say, you can talk about that being a problem of the watershed, but don't spend lots of time talking about all of the problems of the watershed or all of the aspects of why there's limited amounts of water. Try to focus on uh, this is our particular problem, and this is how our project is going to help solve it. Okay, and we want you to give as many details as possible as to how your project will be implemented. So that's really the time that you want to spend in this presentation is telling us as many details as you can about your project idea and how it will be implemented. So on that note, um, in your proposal, there's a budget. Make sure that you mention the budget and talk about what the costs are and also where are you planning to get that money from, right? So a lot of you will have that in the proposal. If you didn't have that in your proposal yet, be sure that you're including it. And here's a heads up, Caring for Our Watersheds project will give $1,000 to any project that is gonna be implemented. So in your budget, you can talk about caring for giving you that thousand dollars. Okay, so you don't have to worry about raising all of the money from different sources. Definitely use that funding source as at least one area of your budget. And we have, you know, um, budget templates and things like that. So if you don't have one of those already, it was in the student workbook. If you haven't seen that, let me know and I'd be happy to send it out to you. Um, also, I'm not a judge, that reminds me. I'm not a judge, so I am here for the next couple of weeks. If you need anything, if you have any questions, please contact me, email me, whatever, call me, and we can get it figured out, okay? Um, and so the last part here for this presentation is just try to talk to people right now. So if, you're a present, if your project idea involves doing something at the school, and in your proposal, you said, we're gonna to talk to the principal and get permission. Now is the time to talk to the principal because as much as you can make your idea seem like it's ready to be implemented, the more um, points you'll get from the judges. So if you need any permissions, if you need any support from other people, try to get that going at least before the final competition. Make those emails, make those calls right now. Okay, so that's the presentation time. That's what I want you to focus on for those five minutes. And then after the presentation, the judges will have a few minutes that they'll be able to write down any notes, um, to record your scores. 
and then to ask you any questions. And so generally we'll have one or two judges ask one or two questions. So you might get one or two or three questions. And I really don't want you to be intimidated by these judges. They're all really nice people. Um, and why they're asking you questions actually is to help elaborate on your idea. So if they're looking at the um, scoring sheet and they're thinking, well, I think I'm only going to be able to give them a three out of five in their budget, but then they ask you a question about your budget and then you have an answer for them, instead of getting that three, maybe now you can get five, right? So think of it as an opportunity to get more points, right? Because five minutes isn't a lot of time to talk about all of the details. Um, so th that question and answer period gives a bit more time to elaborate on some of the parts of the idea. And if you needed to talk to the other people in your group before answering the question, you're absolutely able to do that. Okay, you can talk about it amongst yourselves a little bit and then submit the or then, you know, tell us the answer that you that you have in mind. Okay. Um, a few more ideas here about your presentation. We want you to share time between the group members. So if you had four people in your group, you can't just have one person doing all the talking. Everyone needs to share that. It would be, I think, best if everyone had their own camera on. Now, I'd actually like to ask you how that would work for you. Because if you were gonna be at school, and like I can see the EcoVision Club right now, if you're all using one laptop and you were gonna present that way, and that works best for you, that's fine. If you were all gonna be in one room, um, all on your own tablet or laptop, that would probably work too. We'll just need to kind of figure that out. And, um, and that's one of those things that we'll have time before we actually start the presentation to figure out. Um, and if you had any questions about that, you can let me know ahead of time too. We will only have one person sharing the screen for their slides, right? So if you have a Prezi PowerPoint or Google Slides, um, only one person should share the screen. So it's not like, okay, I'm gonna be presenting and then when I'm done presenting and my group member is presenting, they're gonna share their screen. So when you're practicing, practice having the person share their screen and control the slides forward. And then I would love it if you all sent me the presentations ahead of time, just in case anything's not working during that presentation time, I would be able to then share the slides um, sharing on my screen and sharing with the judges. Okay. So I'm just going to pause there and see if anyone has any questions. Okay, I'm not hearing any questions. Uh, okay, uh, can you hear us better? Okay, great. Uh, right now we don't have any questions available. Sure, okay, thanks. Uh, oh, I think you do have some questions in the chat. Yeah, I was just opening that myself. Thank you for bringing my attention. When I'm sharing the screen, I don't see the chat box. There it is. Question from New Murnham School. Yeah. We're just wondering if we're able to have like um a, like our model to show you guys if it's not like pictures of it. Sure, like you would actually have that kind of um with you in the room and then show it through the webcam. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that's fine. Perfect. And what platform are you guys using? Google Meets or Zoom? We're gonna be using Zoom. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I see the questions now. Um, what is my email? So my email is natalie at battleriverwatershed.ca. I'm just putting that in the chat box. Um, 
I have been emailing people, but if anyone goes to the Fort McMurray schools, your email provider won't let an outside email come through. So you might not be getting them. So I'm trying to send them through your teachers um, and they will forward them along. Another question is, what is an example question from a judge? Um, I guess it would have a lot to do with your project, but I would say something like, like if you were talking about compost, they might ask, okay, well, is anyone going to be responsible for monitoring when the compost is going in to make sure that there's no garbage going in there, right? So just trying to help you elaborate on some of the um, ideas that you might not have discussed thoroughly. Okay. Um, do we have to implement and get permission for the project before the contest? No. You don't. Um, I would say if you have things lined up to implement, that looks better than if you're just saying, oh, then we would think of doing this, or then we would ask someone else if we can do this. If you say, we've already talked to the principal and they're allowing us to do it, uh, we're going to use the $1,000 from caring for our watershed, and we're going to do it on May 19th, that's great, right? And then it looks really good and professional. And does every group get $1,000 for implementations or do groups have to complete or compete for it? Every group is eligible for the $1,000 of implementation funding. So if you want to make your project happen, we are there for $1,000, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less, depending on how much your project needs. But there is no competition for that. We have $10,000 to give away. But that is not the prize amount, right? Every group is also um, gonna be receiving a prize amount. And I'll talk about that in a minute here. Question, would we be able to view the comments that the judges wrote on our written proposals before we give our verbal presentations? Yeah, great question, Tracy. I have actually sent all of the feedback from the judges to your teacher. So if you haven't received that yet, um, they do have it. But I can, I can send it to you as well, Tracy. And so if anyone else hasn't received that feedback, let me know and I can make sure to send it. Okay. Okay, let's go back into this presentation here. Okay. So for the presentation, so for the presentations, we're doing our presentations um, for the judges between that April 19th and the 21st. So I'd like everyone to go in and choose their time slot by this Sunday so that we can tell the judges when they have to be there, right? I think many of you have already gone and done that. But if you haven't yet, please do make that choice by Sunday. And they're half an hour time slots so that we have lots of time. Because if you have a five minute presentation within a half an hour time slot, right, that should give us lots of wiggle room. So that means you have time to come in, get everyone acquainted with Zoom, make sure that your PowerPoint is being shared properly, um, introduce yourself to the judges, and then we'll start the presentation. And so what I'll do is I'll actually um, just record when you're doing the presentation. Um, yeah, so I think that's it. So within that 30 minutes, I'll go over that again. I'd like you to all introduce yourselves, share your presentation. We'll have time for the judges to have their questions and I'll be recording all of that, okay? And then after that recording, I will be doing a little bit of light editing just to cut off any of the tech stuff and um, anything that's unnecessary, just to make it a little bit shorter. And those um, videos are what we'll share at the live event. So I know that often students feel really nervous about the judges and wanna know who these people are. So uh, this is just a list of the judges. You'll actually meet them on April 19th, 21st during your half an hour time slot there. But we have people from a bunch of different groups from around central Alberta here. 
Um, so Khalil is from the Battle River Research Group, which is in agriculture. Sheila works with the Wolf Creek School Division in the First Nations, Métis, and Inuit student success. We have a, a university student. Max is a retired teacher and is a counselor for the city. Um, Tyna, Tyna, I can't, not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, Tyana is a research biologist working in fish, fisheries and oceans, and Corey Wald works for Nutrien. Okay, so people from lots of different backgrounds, and we try to do that so that they have um, different interests and kind of know about your topics. Okay, and they're very nice people, I promise you. Okay, so that's all of the prep stuff. And then on the Saturday, April 24, from 6 to 8.30 p.m., we're going to be going live and doing an event kind of like this on Zoom. Um, it'll be like a celebration presentation. We'll have a few welcomes and introductions. Then we'll have uh, five of the pre-recorded presentations. So I'm just going to be sharing the videos and then I'll be there to kind of talk in between. We'll have a little break and some little game. We'll do five more presentations. We'll have one more break and then we'll have the award ceremony where I'll be presenting, you know, this group is in 10th place, this group's in ninth place, this group's in eighth place, all the way down to the first place. Okay. And I'm asking everyone just fancy up top. So we're at home, we're online. You don't have to be all the way fancy. We can't see, you know, if you're wearing pajama pants or slippers but maybe you wanna wear a fancy blouse or a dress or something up top, because since we're all gonna be at this final competition, it's gonna be fun. I just thought it'd be fun to be a little fancy up top. You know, maybe a top hat even, whatever you got. And uh, of course the awards, I'm sure you're all aware, the first place prize is $1,000, going down to um, $300 for 10th place, and this is always tricky because you're all winners already, um, but there is prize amounts for yourself and for the school we will get a matching prize amount. If you're in a group, you'll divide that money amongst your group members and we're going to be mailing out the checks after the event. Okay. Great. So that's all I needed to talk to you about, but we have a few minutes here if anyone had any questions. So I see already there's one in the chat box there. Does our teacher have to come to our Zoom call when we present? No, they don't have to, but they're very welcome to be there if they want to be or if you would like to have them there. Do family members have to buy tickets to go to the live event? They don't have to purchase. There's no money but they do have to go and get their ticket through that Eventbrite link. And that's just so that we're emailing out the link to everyone. Yeah, and I put that in an email to you. So just make sure um, it's just really one per household, right? But if you wanted to send this to your grandparents, to your aunts and uncles, friends, right? You can have as many people as you want cheering for you um, just by sending them that link and they can register and then on the 24th, they'll have the access to the event. If you're in a group, will separate checks be mailed? Yes. So we will divide the prize amount and then mail one check to every group, which is a reminder to make sure you have the RSVP form filled out so that we have your address so that we can send it to you. Do you have to sign up for tickets yourselves? Um, no, well, no, I'll be definitely sending out the link to everyone in this group, but it doesn't hurt if you do want to go on to that event and sign up, you're welcome to, um, but you don't have to. Great. Another question, are the judges for the presentation the same judges who marked the proposals? No, we actually have a new set of judges who mark the proposals. Good questions, everyone. I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. Okay. 
Are there any other questions here? Oh, what is the biggest recommendation for when we present? Good question, Sarah. Um, I think often in presentations, it comes down to being prepared, to feeling really comfortable both with your presentation, like the slides, as well as your speaking notes. Now you guys might have it a little bit easier this year because often people are afraid of public speaking. And if we were having the event in person, there might be a hundred people sitting in front of you watching you, right? So, you know, being uh, at school, being in front of a computer might feel a little bit less intimidating, but there's other challenges associated with that, right? Not being able to read the room and to see people sometimes feels different too. Um, so I think the most important thing is that you feel prepared, that you've been over your presentation a lot of times, um, and just some basic presentation things. Speak slowly. I've probably been speaking too fast. So slow down, have some water handy. Um, make sure you're using you know, the same computer and the same setup um, so that you don't have any tech surprises, right? Um, there, there could be um, some unexpected things that happen. So I would say come with the idea that we have a half an hour. If not everything's working right away, we can calm down, we can you know, take a little break, reevaluate. If in that half an hour, let's say one of your group members Wi-Fi is really bad and they can't present, if you need to have a second presentation time, we will accommodate that, okay? So let's come to that time slot prepared, but let's not panic if the tech or something's not working well. Um, sorry, I have a question. Great. Um, when we um, come with our family, can we all go on the same computer? Yes. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Hi, EcoVision. Did you have a question? Can we showcase uh, our template? and you give us a little bit of feedback. Sure, yeah. So if you would like to send me your presentation ahead of time, um, let's actually choose a date for that right now. And like we have a, a template right now. Would you look at the template and right now and just give like a, a quick, like we will just give you a quick overview. Let's not and then, do right now, Steve. Um, let's try to do that like either tomorrow or later, just so that we're not holding up everyone. I know we're already five. Oh, yeah, I, I didn't realize there were other people still here. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, thanks. Um, but that applies for anyone. So, like I mentioned earlier, if you want, if you have any questions or need anything, please let me know. So if you wanted any feedback on anything, send it to me by next Thursday. So that means you have one week to send me anything you'd like me to look over and I'll give you feedback on. And then you would have over the weekend to make any final changes before the presentations that start on the 19th, 20th and 21st. Okay, so that's the 15th. And I'll send out some reminders and emails and stuff. Um, so I'll put that in there. Hey. I have another. I have another question. Yeah. Um, if one of our members of our team um, has had to drop out, are we allowed to add another member? Yes. Yeah. I would say that's fine. If you guys were okay. more comfortable having a fourth person and you wanted to invite someone else into the team, you can. If you would prefer to have just the three of you in the team, that would be fine too. Just let me know. Um, and they, let me know their names too, so that I can make sure that we have the correct names on all the documents and stuff. Okay, perfect. Can you uh, scroll through the participants and want to see? Any other questions? Um, I have a question. Yeah. 
Would you suggest a longer presentation or like a shorter one? The presentation has to be five minutes. Okay. So aim for five. I would say it cannot be more than six and it should not be more less than four. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, everyone. Well, I will um, officially say goodbye. If you had any final questions that come up, you can just stay on the call for a minute or send me an email afterwards, okay? So thank you all for being here. Um, I'm really excited to have this final competition with you all. You've got some great ideas. I can't wait to see you present them.